What's up everybody? So in the past, I've made several videos about some of the best laptops you can buy in a given year, like 2021 for example. I've also made videos about things to consider when shopping for a new laptop, but what I haven't explicitly done is make a video about things to absolutely avoid when going out to shop for a new laptop. This is essentially a oversimplified video, deliberately so, to help you kind of set the foundation of things that you want to walk away from right away if you see these in a laptop. Hopefully this video will make your shopping process a little bit more smooth and streamlined. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button and consider subbing to our channel. Thank you for watching. Let's go. The first aspect is build integrity. So while you might say, hey, aren't cheaper laptops naturally going to feel more flimsy and cheap in nature? Absolutely they will because they use different materials. But even so, some laptops in the budget category are just built so much better than the competition. Take the HP Laptop 15, the 2021 model to be exact. In my review, I mentioned how its build quality was just very bad. If you put even a finger's worth of pressure on any part of the laptop, you could literally see the plastic bending on it. It was really finicky, poorly built, and you could literally rattle the laptop and hear somewhat loose sounds of the plastic, you know, chipping around. Now, in that same category, around $700 USD, you could buy the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 at that time, which had dramatically better build quality there, even though it was also made of full plastic, mind you, but it didn't have flex, it didn't bend around, and you could definitely tell that one laptop laptop was just more solid and sturdy than the other despite being in the exact same price category. Components like the keyboard, the trackpad, and the exterior chassis are bound to get damaged over time as wear and tear occurs on the laptop. And if you buy one with really bad integrity, you can bet that it's going to start breaking down a lot faster. So make sure you keep an eye out on that. The next point, which is technically an extension of the first one, is the hinge quality. The hinge is the mechanism that connects the top display of the laptop to the rest of the body. Think of it like the human neck. Once it breaks, there's no coming back from it. A broken hinge basically means your display won't work anymore on the laptop, and in some cases, the entire laptop in itself might fail. So to avoid that, the good news is that there are some easy things to look for when shopping for a high quality hinge. The first thing you want to consider is the amount of wobble you see with the lid. While all laptop screens do have some degree of wobbliness, if that's a word technically, but anyway, the point is if a laptop is wobbling a lot, if it's very shaky, even if you're holding the laptop, right away that's a big no-no because because it means the hinge is very loose in nature and is going to suffer from a lot of wobble. The second thing is the amount of pressure you feel when you're actually unfolding the laptop. If you're feeling a lot of strain being put on the lid, that's again a big no-no because that literally means that laptop is exerting so much force on the hinge mechanism, it's going to break over time through wear and tear, which will essentially render the top half of your laptop useless. Now, of course, not all hinges are black and white. There's going to be varying degrees of quality. If you're seeing an insane amount of wobble, avoid it. But if you see some degree of wobble or some degree of pressure, gentle use will definitely help, you know, maximize the lifespan you get from the hinges of your laptop. While it's entirely normal for all electronic devices to heat up as you use them, what's not normal is when they're constantly in a state of overheating. Now, in the world of laptops, again, it's normal for a laptop to get hot when you're doing really intensive activities like photo or video editing, for example. But some laptops, despite having the same body size and configuration, tend to get more hot than their counterparts. And this simply comes down to because they have a poorly built thermal management system or cooling system, if you will. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way to identify this when you go to a laptop store, but that's why you have YouTube channels like mine or review tech sites out there that actually talk about thermals often in a lot of details. As a general rule of thumb, I like to say any laptop that hits an average surface temperature of more than 45 degrees Celsius under high loads, you should generally avoid it unless you specifically have a use case or you're never really going to push it to its limits because those kind of laptops will often overheat, which results in a reduced performance because a laptop will reduce its overall performance to cool down more quickly, which means you get a lot of lag and choppy experience when using certain applications. And the second thing is excessive overheating causes damage to components, which can often cause activities or events, sorry, like motherboard failure, processor failure, and sometimes other external components getting damaged as well from too much heat. So the better the thermal management system on a laptop, 
the more likely it's going to have a longer lifespan overall. The final aspect is storage. You should not buy any laptop that has less than 250 gigabytes of storage at a bare minimum. Simply put, let's say you buy a laptop that only has 128 gigabytes of storage. Windows 11 and Mac OS on average take anywhere between 20 to 30 gigabytes of storage capacity, meaning right from the get-go, one fourth of your entire hard disk space is already used. And applications like Microsoft Office, for example, can take up to another 10 gigabytes, which means install a couple of applications and you'll max out your drive. And this happens all the time with consumers. Now, rather, I highly advise if you have the budget, you should get a laptop with at least 500 gigabytes of storage capacity. This allows you to make sure you have plenty of space to install multiple applications, keep files on there. Some people might say, I keep my stuff on the cloud. Sure, but you can't put actual applications on the cloud. Well, you can, but for the most part, they run off your local drive. You can only really store documents, pictures, videos, and other local files like that. Also keep in mind that most laptops nowadays, unfortunately, cannot be upgraded in terms of storage. So whatever you buy from the get-go is what you have till that laptop pretty much dies off or you replace it. So that's a huge consideration to keep in mind. Naturally, there are so many other things to consider when buying a laptop. What I've essentially done here for you is laid out a foundation of things you should definitely avoid or walk away from from the get-go. If you are interested in learning more about things that you might wanna watch out in a laptop or things that might make your laptop experience a good one, definitely check out my laptop buyer's guide. It goes in so many different aspects you may not even be aware of. It's really user-friendly and it'll give you a good idea of the kind of laptop you want to go for and the things you may want to look into based on your use case. Now, as always, if you guys found this video to be helpful, please consider hitting that like button and subbing to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow and it means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. Catch you in the next one.